products. Uh, okay. I, I shudder to think what they'd be worth now. <laughs> Were you a Marvel I or DC? Yeah, I'm always Marvel, but I also like DC. I had some early, uh, early DC comics. Uh, the one I remember, uh, the first old comic I bought was uh, Iron Man 3. Okay. Uh, and then I got hooked. I tried to find early, you know, Fantastic Four and all this, and I became big fans of that. That's when I discovered the Eternals. That's oh, where okay. my friend, uh, in a bookstore, he had a part-time job at 14, yeah. sorting comics. I can't and, and imagine what that would be worth. Yeah. That basement of that bookstore, Sandy's in my hometown, was uh, stocked full of amazing comics. And that's when I realized, I thought, when I was, I guess like 14, 15, I, I found out the, the Eternals. Yeah. And I, and, you know, I ended up looking at him. It was surreal. <laughs> being front and center, oh. but interestingly enough, in my those home movies, I would always, you know, uh, I would go in, you know, I, I was always wanted to be, but I chose a profession where, my, for example, I prefer to be at home, yeah. you know what I mean, yeah. and then when you, you have to, there's a certain energy, but I, I really enjoy coming here, but uh, to the conventions, but I, gosh, what, who did I see? I think it wasn't until I got my first cartoon, it was G.I. Okay. Joe, I went, oh, I want to be part of this. And then I want to do everything I can to be part of this and stay part of this forever. Yeah. And that became like a major, major focus. I did some X Files. Yeah. You know, they, when they were when I used to live in Canada, they, I, I was I did a bunch of the shows, Sliders and X Files. Yeah. Um, and I kind of I really liked it. Yeah. One of the things though is my agent would be all proud and call, hey, listen, I got you, a, get you a double wide, I got you a double banger, I got you. I was like, oh, okay, great, because I would go on set and I would be nowhere to be found. I'd be hanging with the, the audio crew, I'd be hanging with the, the DOP, I'd be standing behind the camera like I'm the director. And there, I remember that I was like, what was I doing? I had a sort of Battlestar Galactica, okay. and they couldn't find me. It was like, what are you, David Cage? Are you David Cage? <laughs> and, and, and I was, I didn't know, but the, the AD comes over and says, oh my God, we're, we're looking for you, you need to get the hair, you know, we got to get you on or whatever, yeah. you're coming. I said, I've been here the whole time. Oh my God, really? We've been looking all over for you. I never, I was never in my trailer. I was more interested in what's going on behind the camera. Yeah. Uh, and then when I found, I was a radio guy, I was on the air, I was on radio, and I really loved being behind the mic. Yeah. So, at one, I think it was a, probably in the mid 90s, I was doing both. Yeah. And a good friend of mine, he's a pro marketer and a very, he's still a close friend today, just my website. Mark says, What do you want to do? That's what I mean. Well, you, I know you like to do it all, but you can't, I mean, you can't do everything. Right. What would you, what, if you could choose, what would it be? I said, You know what? I love voice. He goes, Then do that. Do that. So that's when I decided then and there that I would focus on voice. And that's when things started to really, you know, I don't know, change or yeah. trajectory was this way. To me, it's like a, on a dial. It's all like little levels of stuff on a dial, you know. Uh, there's trailer, which is different. There's narration, different. There's promo, that's different. There's a different energy, different, different attack, different place. There's, right. there's, there's sports stuff. There's storytelling. It's, but it all has to be a real person. It has right. to come from your soul. It has to be believable. It can't sound like a disembodied voice, you know. Come on down to Joe's Tire because we got tires on sale for $4.99. Uh, okay, whatever. But it, I want to hear a real. I want to be taken in. Um, there's a great line from Noises Off, a play that I did years ago, yeah. and then uh, Lloyd said that the character says, I, I, I want to be taken out of myself and preferably not to be put back in. <laughs> I mean, that's entertainment. I want to, I want to go away. Yeah. I don't want, and, and my mentor, the late Don LaFontaine, which is why I'm doing trailers, right. in you a know, world. said to me, he said, you, know, you should be doing this, you know. Uh, but he invented in a world, and when he says in the theater, in a world, you want to be taken out of your world, which could be really crappy, you know, having a bad day, and put into this other place where you're not thinking about, you know, we want to take you away and put you into this world. That's what that is. Those in a world, three words, transport you. You know, I don't want to be thinking about a, somebody doing a voice. I want to be, you know, yeah, that's why I approach everything these days, you know, believability, human, the human element, no matter it's a robot or what, it's got to be human, it's got to be a, a real person.